In today's video, we're talking about StreamerBot, and if you've not used it before, you're probably gonna wanna check it out after this, even if you just stick around for the preview of what we're gonna set up today. On screen right now, you're gonna see a handful of cool effects and things that you can do with StreamerBot. It integrates with your streaming platform and OBS to let it control things like your sources, your scenes, your filters, and do loads of different really interesting things. If any of those things I just showed you look interesting to you and you wanna set them up stick around because we're going to set up streamer bot from scratch and then create those cool things we just saw so when you first open up streamer bot nothing's going to be connected don't worry about that we're going to connect obs and streamer bot first and then we're going to connect other accounts as well so you can see over here there is a tab called stream apps and in here there shouldn't be anything just yet but what we're going to do is go into your obs and under tools you should be able to see websocket server settings try saying that four times really fast all we really need to do for this is enable it and hit ok come back into streamer bot and in the stream apps tab right click hit add and you can call this whatever you want best to probably call it obs studio since that's what this is we don't need a password but we do want to auto connect on startup and reconnect on disconnect type in obs obs studio hit ok and you can hit the connect button right there now if we head over to the integrations tab but what i've just done myself is connect the stream elements account that i have to this you can do the same thing for your stream labs it's fairly straightforward to set up next if i go to the platforms tab i can see twitch and you can see events channel points polls predictions and accounts that's the one you want to click on in here, you can see we have the broadcaster account. That's just your streamer account. If I hit connect to Twitch, you can see right here, it's brought up the authorization for Twitch. I can hit authorize right there. Logged in successfully. Come back in here and I am connected to Twitch through StreamerBot. Now that you have your alert system and your actual streaming account connected to StreamerBot, we're gonna get into setting up a dynamic shout out. It's gonna pull the name of the person you're shouting out and it's gonna put it into your stream in a sleek kind of animated way. Something that'll really impress your viewers. So what you wanna do first of all is right click and hit add and we're gonna add an action. So call it dynamic shout out and uh, you can put it into a group if you want. Um, this is gonna pop up on screen so I have a group of pop-ups essentially and I'll put it in there, hit okay and we have a blank shout out action with no sub actions currently in it. We're going to change that though. Now what this shout out is going to do is it's going to interact with our Twitch and with our OBS. Hence those connections being so important. So we need to set up something in OBS for this to interact with. Come back over to OBS and you can see down here I have two scenes with NS at the start of them. These are in a wee folder called nested scenes. So add in a scene and I have a scene here called scene test and in here simply add in a text GDI source call this dynamic username and then we're going to add another source which is going to be a browser source and we're going to call this dynamic profile pick hit ok and change the width and height to be exactly the same they don't have to be 300 by 300 that's just what I'm using and you actually don't need to do anything else in here just hit ok you might want to even put some text in here just as a temporary fixture and just let you move the actual source itself so you can kind of place it where you might want it so at the minute we have this basic setup put it down in the bottom here and uh, it's going to pop up whenever we have this set up so back in the sub action section here right click and go to add sub action and come right down to twitch in here you're going to see something called get user info for target click that and set the source type to from input hit ok and what this is going to do is it's going to take the target info from what we put in. So there I have shout out nerd or die. The target info is nerd or die and the input is shout out. So it's now collecting information about that Twitch account and then whatever variables I use going ahead, it's gonna pull from that account and put them into our command. So we're gonna add another sub action and this time we're going to the OBS sub menu and down to set 
browser source URL. Now you can see here, it's already picked the scene that we're on in OBS. So it knows we're there and knows we're working in that scene. You can see that it spotted the only browser source that's currently active and it's selected the dynamic profile pick browser source, which is exactly what we want. In the URL here, what we want to do is actually in this tooltip at the bottom, you can see a variable that says target user profile image URL. And what this will do is pull the profile image from the person we're shouting out and put it into this browser source. So just type out the variable just below this and make sure it's exactly the same. Hit OK. Next, we want to grab their username. So if we hit add sub action and come down to OBS again. And now, because remember we made a GDI text source, we're going to use the set GDI text here. And again, they showed how to do this in the tooltip below. And you can put this variable within a sentence. So if I say, hey, how's it going? Hit OK. That's going to work. Now I'm actually going to switch both of these off because what we're going to do now is we're going to activate them, hold them on screen and then deactivate them. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go to sub action, down to OBS, set source visibility state, click that. And straight away, the first one we see is our dynamic profile picture. We actually want to show this first and then the message afterwards, which is why delays are going to be really handy for this. It's state is visible, which is what we want. Hit OK on that and it puts it right there at the bottom. Next. We'll go back in, down to OBS again, set source visibility state, and we're going to check the dynamic username to be visible. And the great thing about this is you can actually just duplicate actions. So what I want to do is use those actions again, but make them both hidden. So right click on the action, hit duplicate sub action. You'll see it right here at the bottom, double click it, set it to hidden. Same for this one, double click it, set it to hidden. Basically now what's going to happen, these will turn on really quickly and turn off really quickly. You won't see it. We don't want that. We want it to be on screen for a few seconds anyway. So right click again and in sub actions at the very top, you're going to see delay. Click that. And this works on milliseconds. So we'll put in first of all, one for a thousand milliseconds. I'm going to put that just before everything actually starts. So to just make sure that it has grabbed all the information it needs. Again, we can just add another delay in here and I'm going to put it in between the profile picture and dynamic username. So the profile pic comes up, one second goes by, then the actual username and all the information comes in afterwards. I'm going to add another delay and this time I'm going to put it at 5000 milliseconds. So I want to hold everything on screen visible for about five seconds. Put that in between the visible states and the hidden state. That'll stay there for five seconds. And if I add one more delay, put it in here between the profile pic and username disappearing, that should be everything that we need. Now we have no way to actually test this just yet because we haven't connected it to a command. So head over to the commands tab and in here, add a new command. I'm going to call it exclamation mark new shout. And you can see there's lots of different options. The main one is the action right here. If you click on that and you can see our dynamic shout out action right there, select it. And over here, you can change the group permissions. So you can select basically who is allowed to actually use this command. Hit OK. And now we have a command called new shout and it will activate the dynamic shout out action we've just made. Come over into your Twitch chat, type xmish mark new shout. And there you go. Look, it pops up one by one. And then a few seconds later, it disappears. That doesn't really look really good. I have one here that looks a lot better, I think. And if we have this pop up to slow kind of fade in, it has everything coming in really smooth. What I've done there is if I click on the profile image browser source, go to filters and I have an image mask on here and I'm actually using one of Nerd or Die's free webcam masks that they have available on their website. All the options are really good. You should definitely check them out. And I've just set the alpha mask to color channel and left it at that. Now, if you want the likes of this popping up really smooth like that there, you can see all this comes in really nicely and it disappears really nicely. It is actually just using something that's built in the OBS now, which is the show and hide transitions. So if I right click on profile image here, go to show transition and swipe, click on that. You can see it's coming in upwards and you can preview it here or even whenever you're setting this up, you can see how it reacts. It goes up and down. Pretty neat. And I have up with the swipe in checked. And then on the hide, I have down with the swipe in unchecked. Same kind of idea for the username. I have right with the swipe in checked. 
And then I have on the hide, I have left with the swipe in unchecked. And I've just set them to about 1300 milliseconds each. It's pretty nice. The next thing that we're gonna make is the first time chatter feature that I showed you at the start. You can see it on screen now. It's just a nice little way of saying hello to someone who's just said hi or whatever for the first time in your chat. It's really quick to set up. The first thing you wanna do is make a new action in the actions tab and call it first time chatter. The first sub action in here is the get user info for target, which is down in the Twitch sub menu. You can see it right there. Just add that and set the source type to user. Before anything else goes into the sub action menu, we actually need to create a few assets in OBS. So over in OBS, the same as what we did for the dynamic shout out, you wanna create a browser source and a text source. Do the same again, just set it 300 by 300 and set the text field. It can literally just be test for now. With a profile image and username now available to use, let's go back into the sub action menu and down to the OBS menu. And in here, add a set browser source URL. Point it to the profile image browser source we made and put in the same variable as before here. Hit OK, and then add a set GDI text sub action right here. And in here, point towards the username text source that we made. Below this, we're using the same variable again. I've put a message in around it. However you wanna do this is totally up to you. And I put a little space here just so that it pops out further past the image. Totally optional. Just play around with it until you get what looks right for you. Next, we're gonna put in the source visibility sub action. So down to OBS again, set source visibility state then I just need to change these to the profile image make it visible the username make it visible the username make it hidden and the profile image make it hidden we've done this before so it's the same stuff as the dynamic shout out in between each of these I have a delay set as well which is right there and that's your first time chatter set up now to actually use this in your twitch stream come over the platforms and go in the events general and in here you'll see a tab that says first words just click on that select the first time chatter action and you can hit reset here so it resets everyone's time for being a first time chatter. And um, once you actually then say something in here, so I'll just type hello. Pops up on screen, welcoming me into the stream as a first time chatter. Check this out. Scene one. Scene two. Now what that's doing is it's listening to my voice and it's taking that, putting it into a voice command I've set up to change between the two different scenes I have here. You can see in the voice control tab, the two I was using there are this top one, which goes to the full cam, i.e. scene one, and then the other one, which is gameplay, and that's in scene two. Set these up is pretty straightforward. Add in a speech to text command and in the name field, this is basically the description of what it's gonna be. So we'll say new command. And then in the actual command field, this is what you're gonna say to activate this command. I'm just gonna put in scene one for this example. In the third field, you're gonna have three options, exact, start, and anywhere. So whenever it's set to exact location, it's gonna wait for a space of silence before and after you said the command. If it's set to start, you can start a sentence with the command and then continue speaking afterwards without worrying about it getting confused. And you can check this to have it stop listening once it knows it's heard the command. Anywhere will listen for the command anywhere within a sentence. The action field is gonna determine what happens whenever you say this command. So if you're wanting to change scenes, you're gonna to have to set up an action for that. So if we come over here to actions, and I scroll down, you can see I have scene one and scene two. And if I just click into scene one, you can see there's only one sub action. It's a OBS action and it's setting the active scene right here. And I'm just choosing that scene there as my scene one. And the exact same thing for the gameplay scene. So once you have those set up, go in the voice control and simply just connect the action to the command that you've set up. So in your settings, make sure to check auto listen. I would leave the confidence threshold at zero for now. Select whatever microphone you're gonna use in here, hit start listening, 
and then you should be good to go. The Streamabot wiki actually suggests that you use the speech recognition in Windows, which you can see here. If you type speech recognition into your Windows, you're gonna see this pop up. That's what I'm looking at up here. And if you hit the listen button on this, it's gonna listen to your voice. If it's picking up words or phrases that you want it to get completely correct, like whenever I was originally saying scene one and scene two, it was saying scene as in S-E-E-N. So it wouldn't change over. But what you can do is if you right click on this here, come down to open the speech dictionary, add a new word, and you can add in an expression in here. So if I put scene three, for example, and then here is an option to record the pronunciation, i.e. how you would say it. Check this, and then before hitting finish, make sure that this is blue, because it has to be listening to your voice. Hit finish, hit record, scene three, and then you have your recording. And you can listen to it just to make sure it came through. Scene three. Hit finish on that. And you don't even need this to be on now because it's gonna be logged in there. And whenever I say scene three, you can see at the end there, it's even capitalized it because it's looking into this speech dictionary for that. Scene two, scene one, scene three. They come through, no problem. Most of the stuff it's picking up is completely incorrect for the most part. So for me, it's quite handy to just kind of record in what I know I'm gonna use and then I just set it and forget it. You can have this do so many things, toggle sources, filters, change your scenes when you're in a game and you forgot to switch back from your just chatting scene. You can even set it up to have a few preset games. So if you're changing from just chatting to a game, you could even say set game to whatever the video game is you're gonna play. There's lots of different ways you can use this. That is our first StreamerBot video done and I hope it has shown you the potential power of what this bot can do for your stream. Let me know what you guys thought, any ideas you'd like to see or that you have seen and don't understand how to make. Talk about it in the comments, let us know on Discord and I will see you in the next video. Bye.